More than 400 hotel rooms could soon be used to get people off the streets with housing first. We talked to critics and supporters. A major breakthrough in a cold case tonight. A young woman murdered 37 years ago has finally been identified. Suicide prevention experts say a new approach is helping save lives. Plus, will members of Congress still get paid if the U.S. hits the debt ceiling? We verify. And 40 years of CBS 8 sports anchors say so long to a producer who was the best in the business, Todd V. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. A county plan could help hundreds of people who are experiencing homelessness. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. The county is partnering with the city of San Diego to buy four hotels that could put a roof over people's heads. CBS 8's Brian White is live in Murphy Canyon tonight at one of the hotels that they're hoping to transform. Brian? Yeah, Carlo, we're here in front of an extended stay America Hotel. It's one of four properties across the city they're hoping to transform into permanent supportive housing. What's really important to, for me on this is that this is um, the creation of permanent affordable housing. And I think that that's where it's important that it's really going to help our most vulnerable populations. And so Chairwoman Nora Vargas voicing her support at a Board of Supervisors meeting today for the acquisition of up to four hotels, which would be used to get people off the streets with the housing first model. But not everyone was in favor. As a county entity, I think we should really be focusing our, our money on treatment and services. Uh, not on taxpayer hotels as homeless housing that do, do not require treatment. But Chairwoman Vargas disagreed. Where people don't have access to housing and comprehensive resources and the ability to be able to have the continuum of care, they have a harder time being able to address some of the, the um, health concerns that they have. They voted three to one in favor of partnering with the city of San Diego to apply for state funds from Project Home Key, which requires a housing first approach in which wraparound services would be readily available, but not required. If it would work, I'd be all for it. I want to help people get off the streets just like anybody else. Mayor Bill Wells of El Cajon is an outspoken critic of the housing first model. We've seen California spend $10 billion. They've increased the uh, number of housing units for homeless people by 35%, but we've seen a 48% increase in the number of people that are homeless. So it's pretty obvious that housing first model just doesn't work. The hotels in Mission Valley, Murphy Canyon, and the Midway District would provide 320 units for more than $150 million, averaging more than $475,000 per unit. If you want people off the sidewalk, this is a great way to do it. Uh, the cost is lower than building from ground up, and they're done so much quicker because you already have almost everything that you need there. Michael McConnell has long been an advocate for homeless solutions, and he's excited for what this could do. When these hotels open, you're going to see hundreds of people off the street. Now, is it going to make a dent? No, because we have thousands of people on the street. So we can't just depend upon buying these few hotels. We have to do a lot of things. And if all goes well and the state funding is approved, they could be closing escrow on these hotels by the end of October. And after renovations, people may be moving in by sometime next year. Brian, you just mentioned this would cost more than $150 million. Do you know how much funding they're hoping to get from the state on this? Well, Marcella, they're applying for $88 million from Project Home Key. That's the state program. And as far as the city and the county, they're each saying they'll chip in $32 million apiece. And if you add all that up, that's over $150 million. All right. Looks like they have the funding. Thanks so much, Brian. Right now, San Diego police are looking for the person who shot and killed a 20-year-old at the San Diego Central Library. The shooting also injured a 24-year-old. He is expected to survive. This surveillance video we just obtained from a nearby coffee shop shows what appears to be a masked man holding a gun. Officers got reports of the shooting this afternoon on Park Boulevard. Police say the shooter opened fire after an interaction with two other people in the foyer of the library. One person was pronounced dead at the scene. Another was wounded and is in the hospital tonight. Again, that person is expected to be okay. The Sheriff's Department has identified a cold case murder victim using genetic genealogy 37 years after the woman's body was found on an Indian reservation near Warner Springs. The 22-year-old Escondido mother was reportedly found with her hands and feet bound. Uh, CBS 8's David Garbson reports investigators used DNA from a strand of the victim's hair to identify her. It is really hard. It's really hard on her kids, too. 
After 37 years, the family of Claudette Powers finally knows what happened to the 24-year-old mother. Powers had been missing since the early 1980s. She was my oldest sister. I wish what happened to her didn't happen, but God needed her more than we did. On February 16, 1986, Powers' body was found in a campsite area on the Los Coyotes Indian Reservation. She reportedly had been dead about two weeks, her hands and feet bound. Cold case detectives used a strand of her hair to get a DNA profile and then tapped into genetic genealogy to identify her relatives. Now that she's been identified, the question remains, who killed Claudette Powers? Investigators say the body of a still unidentified male was found in the same area, and the two murders may be related. If you know of my sister, you have worked with her, you have seen her, it would have been back in early 80s to 85 when she come up missing. Please contact the San Diego Sheriff's Department. Tell them what you know about her. Somebody knows what happened. A neighbor, anybody that knew her knows what happened. Please come forward, please. Please, we need closure. The Sheriff's Department is having a news conference tomorrow to answer questions about the case. At this point, investigators say they have not identified any suspects. Uh, David, what do we know uh, about her? Where did she live when she disappeared? What did she do for work? Uh, investigators say she moved from Michigan to Washington State and lived with her husband. Then she left her husband and moved to Escondido. Her last known address was on Fig Street, and she may have worked in a restaurant in that area at the time of her death. Still a lot to learn in this mystery. David Gofferson reporting for us. Thanks, David. The U.S. Attorney's Office says more fentanyl is being seized at our southern border than ever before. That's because of Operation Blue Lotus involving several law enforcement agencies that has placed more officers and resources along the border over the last two months. The U.S. Attorney's Office says from March to May, nearly 3,000 pounds of fentanyl was seized. That's a 300 percent increase from this time last year. Hundreds of fentanyl related arrests have been made as well. Late this afternoon, county supervisors formally approved a resolution calling for a special election to replace former supervisor Nathan Fletcher. Monica Montgomery Stepp, Janessa Goldbeck, and Amy Reichert have entered the District 4 seat race so far. There's still time to join. If no candidate receives a majority vote in the August 15th special election, the race will be decided in a special general election on November 7th. People who are homeless often cannot get access to shelter if they don't surrender their pets. So a pilot program approved last year provided grants to shelters if they could help keep people and their pets together. But as our political reporter Morgan Reiner tells us, a state bill to renew the program faces an uphill battle. The bill is calling for $30 million, $30 million that the governor did not add to his budget, and the state is facing a budget deficit. This bill is one of four that animal advocates are hoping make it to the governor's desk. We hear it all the time as reporters out in the community. Nowhere would take places with pets, and I would, re I, with, she's the reason why I kept going. I'm not going to leave him outside. No pet policies keep struggling people from getting help. The shelters, they hold a lot of barriers. Um, no dogs. AB 1215 would reestablish the Pet Assistance with Support Paws program to award grants to shelters for food and basic veterinary services and a pathway for permanent housing placement. As an assembly bill now moving forward towards the Senate, we are hopeful that it will make it all the way to the governor's desk. But at the same time, we are working on a 30 million a dollar budget allocation to ensure that the program is funded. Money that as of right now is not in the governor's budget. Assemblymember Wendy Carrillo did not say how negotiations were going. I support that. I think animals are um, not only important companions, but they also serve um, an important mental health uh, component too. Republican Assemblymember Bill Asaley supports the bill. In fact, he mostly supports all four bills that animal advocates at the Capitol Tuesday are calling for. AB 1399 would help with the statewide veterinarian shortage by allowing people to seek care for their fur babies through telehealth.
anything that we can do to expand access to care during the shortage is going to help so many people and their animals. And Dr. Jennifer Scarlett is the CEO of the San Francisco SPCA. We haven't had enough new vet schools accredited over the last several years. So we're looking at a shortage today nationally of about 3,500 to 5,000 veterinarians. So if you're having trouble making an appointment today or seeking emergency care for your animal, it will get worse unless we start to make change. Republican Assemblymember Asaley was happy to show support for the bills. What he wanted to talk about, though, is one of his bills that was recently killed in a committee known as Bowie's Law. It would have required shelters across the state to provide 72-hour notice to the public before a dog is euthanized, named after Bowie, a dog the L.A. County Animal Shelter, he says, admitted that they mistakenly put down even though a rescue wanted him. He told me that he's going to try and force lawmakers to vote on the bill this coming Thursday during session. And we'll watch that vote. Thanks, Morgan. Still ahead tonight, will Congress still be paid if the U.S. hits the debt ceiling? We verify that. And as we mark Mental Health Awareness Month, we tell you about the suicide prevention safety plans that are saving lives. And a deep marine layer kept much of San Diego County in the May Gray. We'll take a look ahead towards your Memorial Day holiday forecast coming up on CBS 8.